Hello, everyone, and welcome to Studio C70 from the Committee of 70. I'm Lauren Cristella, I'm the interim president and COO here at our 120 year old nonpartisan nonprofit based in Philadelphia, serving Pennsylvania. Uh, we've been coming to you live throughout the day with different perspectives on the election. And I'm thrilled to have with us today, Anthony Rivera, who is a reporter with the Washington Post. Thank you for being here, Anthony. Thanks for having me. Uh, and you've been out with voters all day, right across Philadelphia. Could you share a little bit about what you heard and, and what you're covering in, in town today? Yeah, um, uh, I think the big message that uh, I've been hearing from voters uh, that I've talked to um, and folks working uh, at the polls and um, outside the polls uh, has been change, um, whether Philadelphians um, are going to vote for change, uh, vote for um, the status quo or something in between. It's, it's, uh, there are, I think there's a lot of energy out there um, to see some of the issues that Philadelphians are dealing with these days um, um, handled um, by someone who um, speaks for them. So, so what you're hearing is a bit of a referendum on the previous administration and, and charting a new path forward. Uh, yeah, I think, you know, that's the word I just keep hearing uh, when I ask is uh, change. And it, it, a lot of folks don't see uh, much change from election to election. Um, and so there's definitely a strong desire to see some action um, of some kind. Um, and, you know, certainly with any election, um, it's going to be looking at the past administration or the past person that was in office. And um, it's certain, sure, it certainly comes to mind with voters. So what parts of the city have you have you been in and um, are you noticing significant differences or is it basically this this change message across the board? Uh, well, I've been in West Philly mostly today. Um, in weeks past, I've been uh, up in Northwest Philly, South Philly, um, and uh, North Philly. And um, today it was interesting. It was uh, slower, um, I believe, a lot of folks were telling me. Um, so a lot of hope for, you know, a lot of more people coming in the door um, sometime in the evening after they're getting off work. Um, but the message seemed to be, yeah, it's a little slow right now and, and uh, just hopeful for, you know, to see more people coming in a little bit later. I think that tracks with what we've been watching too, that there hasn't been um, not too many lines all over. The e-poll book is brand new and that rollout has seemingly gone very smoothly, uh, which was good news to us for the people who recruit and support poll workers for sure. Um, but can you tell us a little bit more about what you cover at, at the Post and what your beat is and what the interest in Philadelphia might be from, from your perspective with a national organization? Yeah, so I'm uh, working with a uh, project at the Post where we're looking at um, non-voters, um, infrequent voters. Um, and I took particular interest um, in Philly um, because it is so important nationally in national electoral politics, um, the presidential that's going to be coming um, next year. So um, it's always been, uh, uh, Pennsylvania has always been a state that I found very interesting among the um, battleground states, the swing states, and um, Philadelphia, knowing that it has not kept pace uh, with the rest of the state in terms of turnout, um, really interested me and I wanted to see what's going on. And, and why is it? Why does it seem like uh, in some of the collar counties or some of the other areas in Pennsylvania, the, the the vote turnout is going up, but in Philly, it's not really doing that. We uh, spend a lot of time thinking about that too. <laughs> the committee of seventy, that's for sure. Uh, well, is there any other? Uh, I mean, I think you had spent some time with different types of wards. Uh, do you, you were with some open wards and some more closed wards and, and examining the ward system. Did you have any takeaways or thoughts on, on that? And is it different from other places or what can we learn? 
time. Yeah, I think just wrapping your mind around the system is like the first step, right? And and what it's all about, and um, and and knowing that a lot of Philadelphians um, are not familiar with the system, or they're not really too clear on on how how it works or how it's set up. Um, I think that's been a little surprising for me. Um, the amount of people that either have purposely or just they're just living their lives and you know they don't have time to really figure out who um you know who the more local person is that they're supposed to be dealing with on elections or even just constituent service type stuff um so um and then of uh, yeah the open board open board closed board thing is um has been very interesting and kind of seeing the differences in the approach uh and the energy that's in some of these um, so-called open boards that are, um, uh, I think, trying to just approach the system in a different way, and and they tout their turnout and they tout their um, the folks that that work in these wards. They they really um, take pride in the door knocking that they do and the voter engagement that they do. Um, so that's been a really interesting part about learning about all this here in Philly. So. Great. Uh, are there anything else that you've you've heard across Philadelphia that that you think our viewers should pay attention to, or things that that you're keeping a close eye on as we wait for polls to close this evening? Um, I think uh, what I've kind of been asking um, voters, besides um, you, you know why they've they've been coming out to vote today. Um, and honing in on some of the issues that um, that have brought them to the polls um, is just what their thoughts are on their city generally for the future. I mean, aside from an election and, and um, you know, there's there's a lot of things coming for Philly um, in the years ahead that are going to be very um, important for the city. Um, there's a big, um, it's not the bicentennial, but there's a, a celebration. Go ahead. Bicentennial. Between yeah, that's the heart. Yeah. That's, I couldn't get my mouth Yeah. Yeah. Um, that, uh, you know, that's coming up and um, I wouldn't, I, I'm, I don't think folks are, folks aren't talking about that, but there is a sense that in the years ahead, whether it's a presidential election, whether it's a, a event like that, um, whether or not um, Philadelphians are prepared for it, um, or uh, will the city uh, make some changes to uh, in a way that will make them proud? Um, and uh, it's kind of the threads I'm trying to pull on as I'm talking to folks, and and you know, and then what's bringing them out in the short term? What are the very short term things you know that they want to see changed, and what are they thinking about? Who are they thinking about? Um, folks talk about their kids a lot. The, uh, some older voters are talking about their kids, and and um, you know, as you can imagine, older voters are very invested in getting to the polls. Um, um, you know, sort of traditionally they are, um, but uh, there is a lot of hope for the youth vote. Um, there are some promising signs that we've seen. Um, over certainly over the last cycle, um, and so I, I I noticed that that they will talk about their kids or you know um, or or young people and and in that sort of context. Are you getting a sense that people are undecided? So as they talk about this, are they the thing that was has been remarkable? I think about this cycle is that so many have remained undecided between fifteen twenty percent up until you know just a few days ago the last poll came out. Uh, and I'd like to think it's because people are okay with a few different choices uh, and they're they're struggling to make up their mind, maybe to vote strategically against one they don't want or, or something like that. But uh, have you been asking if people are strongly supporting anyone or, or if that, you know, if there's a couple of people I like, whatever that sense is? Yeah, that tends to be kind of a, you know, one of the last few questions I'll, I'll throw in there. And um, yeah, you're getting a lot of Sort of, I'm not sure, and I won't know until you know I get to the polls, um, which is fascinating uh, for sure. I know I I can't believe how many rooms I've found myself in, even over the last you know 48 hours, where 
somebody starts talking about this and it's like, I really don't know. I really, you know, I'm so torn. I'm so torn. And or, or I haven't, I haven't looked into it yet. Um, you know, mm-hmm. I, I'm not, I don't have the time to look into it yet. Um, and, and then it, it, I maybe once or twice I'll hear somebody, you know, mention something about the negativity of, you know, certain, you mm-hmm. know, campaigns, um, can go. Um, but by and large, it's, uh, yeah, it's been very undecided and uh, sort of I'm not really going to know until the last minute. Um, so, Which I think it, I mean, is obviously playing out. We're all going to be waiting with bated breath for the polls to close. And if it's very close, we may not know for, for several days uh, how this all shakes out until they start counting provisionals, things like that. Is there anything else you, you think our, our viewers should know or, or about your reporting or what we should be keeping an eye out for, anything like that? Um, I think the, the, some of the um, some of the issues that uh, that voters, you know, sometimes I, I wonder if um, crime, the issue of crime, is sort of a um, a knee jerk one to bring out because that's a, in a lot of ways that's what everybody's talking about or issues connected to crime, um, but. Uh, and, and I've been really trying to dig a little bit deeper on some of those issues and, and ask, okay, well, besides crime, you know, what, um, what else would bring you here or what else would, um, what else animates you um, to get involved politically or to even just to pay attention. Um, and uh, people start getting to um, more of these um, issues that feel like, um, um, kitchen table issues, um, where it starts getting to housing or education or um, or traditional kitchen table issue, which would be you know economic issues or, but those things can be very linked. Um, you know your housing situation um, can very link to your economic situation. So um, those those types of things, um, I I wonder if those become in some ways, the real issues that that are motivating people, because um, when if you can get someone talking and you get get someone um, responding to your questions and and really kind of start to pour their pour out their um, thoughts on something, um, it gets very interesting. And sort of as I was alluding to with the the youth and people talking about their kids, um, you know, there are there are everyday people. Um, are, are dealing with um, things that in their day-to-day lives are very, very difficult um, just, just to get through the day, right? They're, even for voting, for a lot of folks, just mm-hmm. to get to the polls is uh, just a very easy demonstration of, of how much is packed in their life and how hard it is to get from point A to point B or find somebody to cover for this or for that. Um, and so when um, when I am talking to folks, I really try and stay connected to that as opposed to connected to the candidates are interested in or, you know, um, the hottest topic of the day. <laughs> um, um, I know uh, I've watched plenty of mayoral forums and you can see the Sixers arena thing come up a lot. And, you know, it is important to people, but I think... Um, it would be a mistake to focus in on too much of that at a, at the expense. And I'm talking for a candidate or, you know, even just like a committee person talking with everyday people. Um, you know, it'd be a mistake to to focus too much on that kind of thing. And and um, I think if you're on the ground, you're probably uh, in tune with that. But um, yeah, I, th- I think those are things that um, it, it could be easy to miss when there's so much noise going on. Right. And that's one of the things we were saying. There were so many forums and and different things this cycle, probably more than there ever have been. Um, And I have been impressed, I think almost to a person in the kind of top group of top tier of candidates for the mayor's race, that when they do talk about crime, they do talk about it more holistically than it's just, you know, there was, it's easy to, to argue about how many cops on the street or more cops, less cops, whatever that looks like. Um, But I do think uh, certainly that, like I said, the top tier talked about it in terms of 
job security, educational opportunity, workforce development, um, access to health care and child care, things like that, uh, which was one of the, the real benefits of having so many forums. They got to um, to give more thoughtful answers over time, I would say. Yeah. So yeah. I hope and, people are listening. <laughs> people are yeah. Listening. And, and then, you know, I noticed also, and I probably should have mentioned this earlier, you know, with the topic of crime, there's quite a few times where I've talked to a voter and they pivoted to, uh, well, the mental health aspect of it, right? Yeah. Um, so it tells you that um, there's a lot more nuance going on um, than we um, often think about. Um, and they are, you can talk about, um, you know, it's the, ne- the last horrible thing that happened, um, but people start to, in their minds, at least from what I've gathered when talking with them, is they start to dig deeper and try, trying to think of a solution to it that is going beyond um, what you would just hear from uh, a forum, you know, a candidate's forum, which only has so much time for them to, you know, give right. their 60 second response per person. Uh, well, thank you so much. This was uh, fascinating to get your perspective, a little outside view on our inside bubble here in Philadelphia, but um, we appreciate your time and, and all the work you've done to get to the bottom of these conversations and what people are thinking in Philadelphia. Thanks. Thanks for having me. Thanks so much.